Hi there. In this quick video, we'll be upgrading this IKEA Aptal Wind, I think it's the name of it, air cleaner, uh, and we will be smartifying it. We will add this TI DIY S01 uh, relay to make this thingy start and stop by itself on a schedule without having just a simple external uh, timer socket or a smart timer socket this will be a smart internal device with a schedule and also it will be connected to the Tuya app I've done this to other uh, IKEA filters so at this point in time this is the new uh, one that we will do so let's open it up fully and see where we have enough room for uh, why am I opening it at the button? Bottom, where you have enough room for such a little device that isn't actually that little, but anyway. Um, and again, I will link the other description, uh, Jesus, other videos in the description. Uh, hopefully, we can find this much space somewhere inside. We'll see. And yeah, this is Wi Fi. Let's get to it. It's been such a long while since I've uh, modified the other ones that honestly I don't freaking remember exactly how we connected all the wires and whatnot. Eh, if you are interested, this is the switch that you need to press to reset when you change the filter. But uh, that's not our purpose. And we have these type of screws. You can see them actually. Hmm, I don't think I need to open those. They might be just for the rubbers. Or are they for the rubbers? Hmm. <laughs> we do have a few screws down there. Yeah, so from the Kaiwitz set and the uh, random power fix from Lidl, I think. Manage with the power fix uh, screwdriver and this bit from the Kaiwitz managed to find something that seems to be going deep in there not really tight so i'm going to attempt something this is really smart it can come out let me see can the private screwdriver uh, rotate it because if it can yeah it will be extremely long and annoying but it's gonna be much quicker let's see All screws are out. One of them was uh, stubborn and was undone, but it was still in there. It wasn't falling out. So this contraption actually works and it's really useful. Nice. It is moving. Maybe it also has a lot of clips. I was fighting a lot with the clips. Uh, I think I remember from the other ones that I opened that uh, the clips were also stubborn there. But uh, I managed in the end. Oh, and I managed by breaking them. Nice. Why wasn't it coming actually apart? I just needed to pull in theory. They were not actually clips, they were just... If you look at them... They were just guides to make sure that everything sits in place. So why didn't this thing actually want to come apart? Hmm, really weird. Anyway, let me unplug this so I can get uh, the motor assembly away. Because that's not what I need. Perfect. I found the perfect place for it. Basically in this corner nothing is ever going to bother it it's right in this area here so there's nothing uh, reaching that area it's perfect okay so now 
what I would actually need to do. Attach all the cables. Then I will drill a hole through which I can access this button because this is uh, needed in case I ever want to pair it to a different Wi-Fi. Basically to reset this thingy and uh, yeah, then just use a lot of hot glue to keep it in place and that should be done. And yeah, first, so I don't forget, I need to get rid of this thingy because uh, I'm not uh, using this as a portable device. Will this work? Actually, I think I won't be able to hold it with my hand. I was actually able to hold it. Weird. That was not tight at all, honestly. That's actually quite bad. It came out way too easy. But anyway, I will put this somewhere safe. But for me, this will be a double-sided tape uh, on a on a uh, on an IKEA piece of furniture. Let's just call it that. I made a tiny bit more progress, as you can see. So I wanted this wire to be able to come in more, and it's uh, routed through a few slots along the button, the bottom, sorry, around here. So if I wanted it to be able to come more, I needed to cut two pieces uh, of the insulation uh, because I, it was too hard to cut in a single take. Basically, with scissors like this, you just go between the wires and slice it up, making sure you do not damage the wires in any way. That's crucial to not damage the wires. So now I can slide it in further with about this. I have uh, basically more cable to work with. Then what I did, made sure that I know the location where uh, I need the wires to go and I need them to come in here because this is the wiring diagram. So I need here input from 7 to 24 volts. We have exactly 24. If you want to read this, uh, this whole thing, feel free to pause at any time. And also on the back of it, it will be much more in detail in the video in the description. Anyway, there's that. Um, so where I decided it's the best spot. I removed the insulation by just cutting slowly all around with a knife and then just peeling it off and ripping it out of there and then simply did exactly this. Put the cables um, end to end and just rotate it like this, both of them perfect and now I have power from the same cable that's going directly to the PCB and I can plug it in here, doesn't matter which is which, because this goes works even with uh, AC, so you can put positive in each one of them, it's still okay, it just does not care. And one of them, again I don't think it matters which one of them, uh, will be going in the middle hole, right here. And uh, one of them needs to be cut. Actually, the same one that goes in the middle hole will be cut, probably the negative, although I'm not sure yet. Uh, and one end will go in here and the second end will go in here or in here because I don't remember if I need to connect these two normally open or normally closed. I need to think about it for a bit, what I want this thing to be doing to be in line with what the app shows. Made a bit more progress. Cut the negative wire. Why did I cut the negative instead of positive? Because I was feeling like cutting negatives. <laughs> so positive coming into this and going to the rest of the thingy. Negative coming into this module and in the common in the middle. And then we will take from normally open there's an O so it's the furthest away we will take it with uh, this from there and when this relays clicks it will give power to this thingy and it will run when we click the relay to off it will stop 
So yeah, that's about that. Getting ready to drill the hole for the switch. Uh, in this direction, like this, I just put the PCB in and decided, eh, I think the switch is kind of there. But like this, it's kind of impossible to guess. So I simply used uh, this uh, calipers to measure from the end of the USB because it protrudes and it, it will be the first thing that's hitting the plastic to the middle of the switch and then added the thickness of the plastic which is 3 millimeters, quite thick plastic. I'm expecting the bottom to also be 3 millimeters, I hope. And I have a total of 18 millimeters and I just came like this on the level of what I wanted like this and then I decided on this direction and right there. And now I will drill a hole and I have some of these uh, plastic plugs from IKEA furniture that I can use to plug the hole but let me first see I don't remember the diameter of this thing is 4 millimeters so basically I kind of need to let me see are they bigger obviously they are bigger 5 but just barely over 5 so I kind of need to drill a 4 millimeter hole for this thing is to to able to stick and stay in there otherwise if I drill a 5 millimeter hole they might want to fall out so plugged uh, this thing in First time um, it's been powered, so it's trying to connect. I just want to make sure that everything is okay. This is not powering on because we don't have the relay closed because we connect to the normally open variant, which is perfect. But now uh, let me enter Tuya up and connect to this thing. Okay, now let's connect to this thing. So open Tuya up, add device, in electrical, socket Wi-Fi, uh, select your network, make sure it's 2.4 GHz, it will not work with 5. Next, next, yes I did reset it, next, confirm, yep it's blinking, blinking quickly. And now just wait for it to connect. And it was added successfully, awesome. If you don't manage to edit, make sure you don't have uh, Mac filtering or uh, some limits to your uh, IPs in your router or something like that weirdness, network configuration weirdness. So you can change the name. done so new purifier in Romanian and here I have power on power off power on <laughs> and it's working power off perfect and obviously you can set timers you can have a count down, count down uh, until when you want to it to work. Maybe you want it to work two hours from this moment on. Uh, and you have settings, uh, the status of it after uh, a power failure, for example, and stuff like that. Nice. And obviously you can disable the uh, red LED, I think. That's, no, the blue LED, sorry. It has the blue LED, you can disable or enable it. I like to have it enabled. So, yeah, cool. This does the same thing as this. First test successful. I will just uh, use hot glue to keep that in place. And if you want to take a look at the fan itself, it's this type of fan and it just blows air through here and draws it through the filter. If you want more info on the fan itself, maybe you can see from there. So it's a zaolimotor.com and I think it's a 0.45 amps, 24 volts. 
I'm not really sure what else I could give you. Part number DBT45H4B09. And uh, I guess that's about it. Okay, great. Let's put this back together and hopefully we don't have any surprises. But first, hot glue that thingy in place. And it's done. And yes, we have sparkle or glitter <laughs> hot glue. I forgot I had something like that in my uh, glue gun. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it does not conduct uh, electricity and neither did I put it uh, on any bare uh, contacts, just just in case, to be double sure. Uh, wires are in their place, just put a bit of glue in there to make sure it cannot by mistake come over this, that would be bad. Uh, tighten this right up to make sure the wire is tight, because normally IKEA allows adjustment of the loose cable. And it just tucks away nicely in here. So yeah, that's nice. Uh, this is connected in place. I will connect now uh, also the motor itself in this other one. And we should be good to go. And I'm lucky. You can see from here to here I have about 5 centimeters. And uh, huh, this thing is about 4. So we have about 1 centimeters of a centimeter of clearance between this and uh, this plastic right here because this PCB is going right here where it's a bit deeper or shallower depending from where you are looking but we are right here so that was lucky almost didn't fit because I didn't even check I was so sure that, that there is nothing in there that uh, I did not properly check but we got lucky this time so uh, yeah Let's connect this thingy. Don't you want to connect? Yeah, you want to connect, I'm sure about that. Any day now. And it's locked in place, both of them are locked in place. This PCB is not moved, the original one didn't do anything to it. Uh, yeah, basically, honestly, this should be working. I am reaching the switch to the hole that we made, I checked that, so that's perfect. And I think I can rotate this and basically make sure this is in and it is in, in its channels. It's going to try and stay around this area, hopefully it still has enough room, but we'll find out in a moment. Make sure this white cable does not get into the fan, so it goes after the shroud in the exterior and it did uh, black one is right around here and I'm just honestly starting to slide everything down and hope we don't have any sort of uh, I don't know interference or, or stuff like this but something is not allowing me to go down that was weird anyway I think we are good. Just one last look. Everything is plugged in. No wires that could be caught by the cables themselves. Uh, by the screws, sorry, not cables. Yeah, it's all good in there. All good. Slowly in and make sure we don't feel any resistance from anything and we don't it's going right in and we did not need to open this up they don't do anything about holding this case in it's perfect basically it is great at this moment let me tighten all the screws and just to confirm to you that everything is working we have blue light and there's also red light, but really hard to see in there. But where's... Uh, kind of would need something non-conductive, but I 
think I can handle it with care and just put this just a tiny bit in. Oh, where are you, little switch? Did you hear it? So I can reach the switch. And this has memory, so it powers on exactly on the setting that it was before. If it was off, now it's also the relay off. Now relay is on, but this will remain off. And if it's on first setting, let me shut off the relay. Relay is off. It's on and it will again power on on the lowest setting. So this is the perfect behavior that we want. And at this point, we can put this uh, thingy in place. Did I misspoken about the four millimeter hole and I should have drilled the five millimeter? If uh, you do this, make sure the hole is the perfect size for this from the start. Don't let anything untested because anything that you don't test will bite you in the ass in the end. So yeah, lesson learned for the hundredth time. Anyway, and yeah, this is same type of module but with two outputs. So even cooler. And uh, now hopefully this does go in there and you know what I'm going to cut it short I don't even know why I didn't already cut it shorter but I don't plan on this thing hitting that switch I do not want that so uh, yeah switch should be to the right so if I put it like this we should be okay <laughs> eh? that's nice and if I ever need to reset this thing I have a way to touch the switch itself and also somewhat more or less of a way of uh, seeing that the module in there is actually working but I don't think there's like, actually there's too much light in here Maybe like this. So you can see my... It's partially see to My little uh, cover in there. Let's bring back the light. And also, all uh, these things that I modified up until now, I set them in a way that they default start. So if um, you ever, I don't know, for a reason or another, can connect to to the to the servers to the Tuya servers or whatever. This thing can be used as it was new. You just plug it in and it will start directly. Even if you cannot reach the switch itself or whatever happens, this thing by default starts and runs. The other ones do exactly the same. So uh, yeah. And uh, now let's put this thingy right back in here and the cover also on it perfect so at this point i would say we have partially smartified this thing as in it works with timers you can start it and stop it from your mobile phone or from other tuya devices and i think it also works with alexa and uh, google and what the hell not uh, but you cannot control the speed levels. So those you set and every single time it starts, it goes back to exactly the speed level that uh, you last had it on. For me, that's perfect. I will set it to speed number two and leave it there forever. But yeah, if you would like to also change those, uh, yes, you could implement that uh, with another switch. Uh, these things that uh, I used are actually able to do that. One of these, one to turn it on and off, and one could be set to just momentarily give impulses like you would press this button. 
that can be done with this module, this particular one, which is this TI DIY S02. But for me, it was just not worth it. It's not something that's important enough to to make me use that one, which is more expensive and good for other projects. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Hope it helps you. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos, and as always, see you in the next one. Bye. And yes, without the carry handle. And as I told you, it will stay like this. Double-sided tape on this and stick it under uh, a bathroom uh, cabinet. Awesome. And yes, I still have access to, to the filter and whatnot. Bye again.